In the last few lectures, we learned about inserting data into a collection and different settings which we can apply on insert operation. For example, right concern, ordered insertion, unordered insertion, etc. We also learned how we can import data into a collection using a JSON or CSV file. Now, let's move from inserting data to reading data from a collection. So, in the next coming lectures, we are going to learn about fetching data from a collection. We will learn about filtering data, sorting data, etc. And we are also going to learn about different operators which we can use to filter data according to our needs. We will also take a closer look at cursor and how to apply settings on a cursor to implement pagination. So, the next coming lectures are going to be very important. But before we talk about all that, let's first theoretically understand how find method works. How can we filter data using find method and the filter object? How to use operators to filter a specific set of data? So we have already learned that in order to fetch data from a collection, in order to query data from a collection, we can use find method or find one method. Now, when we don't pass a filter object to find method, it will return us all the documents from the collection. But for find one method, if we don't pass a filter object to find one method, it will return us the very first document from the collection. So in this example, you can see we are calling this find one method on the products collection. And to this find one method, we are not passing any filter object. So in that case, it is going to return us the very first document from the products collection. But here, when we are using find method on the products collection, and when we are not passing any filter object here, in that case, this find method is going to fetch all the documents from the products collection. However, we might also want to filter the result set which we are reading from the collection. For that, we can pass a filter object to find or find one method. Now, in this section, we are mostly going to work with find method. We are not going to work with find one method because as we know, find one method is only going to return us a single document. So we are not interested in that. We are interested in filtering a result set. And this find method is going to return us a result set. So we are going to use this find method to filter a result set. Okay. So here you can see to this find method, we are passing a filter object. So the first argument which we pass to this find method, that is a filter object. In that filter object, we can specify some condition. Here we are specifying that we want to filter all those products where the rating is 4.5. So using this filter object, we are telling filter all those documents from the products collection where the ratings value is exactly 4.5. Okay, but what if we want to get all the products whose rating is greater than or equal to 4.5? What should we do in that case? In that case, we can use an operator in filter object. So now what we are telling is here, you can see we are using an operator called greater than equal to. So this GTE stands for greater than equal to. And we are going to talk about this operator in great detail in our coming lecture. But remember that this here is an operator. Okay. So using this operator, what we are telling is find all the documents from the products collection where the rating is greater than or equal to 4.5. So for whichever product document, the rating is greater than or equal to 4.5, those documents will be filtered and it will be returned. So here inside this filter object, we can also use some operators and these are MongoDB operators. Just like greater than equal to, we also have other operators like less than, less than equal to, greater than, then we have in, nin, etc. So we are going to talk about all these operators in great detail in this section. Okay, here this dollar GTE, it is an example of one of the operators which we can use. But we have many more operators in MongoDB to work with and filter documents. And we are going to talk about them in great detail in our coming lectures. Now, since we are talking about operators, we can also classify MongoDB operators in different categories. For example, we can classify MongoDB operators as query selector operators as well as projection operators. So query selector operators are used to specify conditions in MongoDB queries to filter documents based on a specific criteria. They are used within the find or find one method to retrieve document that matches a specified condition. 
So for example, the dollar GTE operator, which we saw in our previous slide, that is a query selector operator. In the same way, we also have projection operators. Projection operators are used to specify which fields to include or exclude from the query results. And they are also used within the find or find one method to tailor the output of the query to the desired fields. Now the query selector and the projection, these operators are basically read related operators. And we also have operators for update operations. And we will talk about the update operators when we will move from read operation to update operation. So in this section, we are only going to talk about those operators which we can use for reading the documents from a collection. When we will talk about updating the documents in a collection and that we will do in our next section, there we will also talk about the update operators. For inserts, there are no operators and for delete also, we don't have any specific operators. For delete, the operators will be same as the read operators. For delete, we need operators to filter the document and delete them. And for that, we can use the same operators which we can use for reading the documents. All right. Now we can classify the query selector operators into different categories. For example, we have comparison operators, we have logical operators, we have element operators, evaluation operators, array operators, comments, and geospatial operators. Now we use geospatial operators to work with geolocation related data. And we will talk about geospatial operators in the future section of this course. In this section, apart from geospatial operators, we are going to talk about all other query selector operators. And then we can also classify projection operator into different types. For example, we have this dollar, which is a projection operator. We have this element match, which is also a projection operator. We have this dollar meta, and we also have this dollar slice. So we are also going to learn about these projection operators in this section. All right. So in the next lecture, let's talk about the comparison operators and how we can use them to filter the result set.